you surprised at how quickly the market has bounced back from last Monday's sell-off? I am. I'm like Rick. Um, there was reason to bounce back. But the speed and the extent to which we, we've bounced back did surprise me. We still have a 35 percent probability of recession. And we had another corporate earnings report today from Home Depot reminding us of the weakness of the consumer. Policy, I think the market is expecting too much from the Fed. And finally, the technicals are still vulnerable. There's still some carry trade out there. So I'm not surprised we bounced back. I'm just surprised how fast and by how much we bounced back. So the, the Fed's going to go in September, yes? Yes, absolutely. And if they by don't, how much? Be, they'll go by 25. What, what raises it to 50, do, do you think? Because, I mean, you, you've made the argument that they're already too late that they should have started cutting already. So I'm sure in, in your mind, you'd like to see them go more than 25, wouldn't you? I would, but I don't think they will. So there's two parts, Scott, as you know, there's a journey and a destination. I would have rather they started the journey earlier and they should have cut in July. But there's also the question of the destination. Where do they end up? They've been ambiguous about that. I think the market is expecting 200 basis points in the next 12 plus months. That would be too much. The market should be more looking for 150 basis points of cuts. You think they've done a good job? Um, I think they did a terrible job in 2021. Yeah, I know, but I it's 2024. Yeah, they've gotten a lot better. That communication is still all over the place. They've got to be more consistent. Um, Chair Powell is going to have a golden opportunity in 10 days' time in Jackson Hall to do three things. One is be clear on what the nat neutral rate is. That's really important. Two, tell us what sort of journey would he like to get there, how he, he would like to get there. And then three, be clearer on what he expects for the economy. If he does that, they can regain control of the policy narrative, and that will help enormously in terms of the next phase. You think we'll get all of that? I don't. I think this is a very cautious Fed. It's a Fed that's excessively data dependent. They got such a beating back in 2021 that they've been very shy about telling us strategically how they see the economy. So, no, I think they're going to be a risk averse Fed. And because of that, we're going to continue having volatility. Do you, do you think there's any risk of cutting too soon or by too much at this point and reaccelerating inflation? Rick Reeder, I'm not sure if you heard his commentary or not, think, thinks that that's a, a, a false premise. Yeah, I think that the inflation risk is much lower than the unemployment risk. So to the extent they make a mistake, I hope they don't, I'd rather they make a mistake by cutting too much than by cutting too little. Um, if you look at what's happening to this economy, we have lost most of our buffers. We no longer have high pandemic savings. Credit cards have been maxed out for the lower income segments. The last thing you need is the labor market to come under pressure, because that's the sole thing keeping, the con keeping consumption going. Which is why the Fed chair continues to talk about it in the manner that he does, right? I mean, are you, do you take any comfort in the fact that if you listen to anything that he's said of, of late, the focus obviously appears to be more on the labor market than it does the inflation picture because they feel, certainly seems, he does, that inflation's on its way back to target. Yeah, if you listen to him carefully, there's more focus on the employment part of the mandate, but he says they are balanced now. The inflation part and the employment part are balanced. I don't think they are. I think the employment part is more important right now than the inflation part. That's why, as, as you noted, I argued that they should have cut last July. They look, view them as balanced. I don't think they are balanced. I think the employment part is very vulnerable right now.